It's the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast coming live and direct. Me and G Moody, last name rhymes with duty. We got all kinds of things to talk about. The Oscars went down. We got sick fucks of the week. We got rabid coyotes roaming the streets of Yonkers, New York, and so much more. Plus, special guest, the Will I Am, Will I Am is in the house with this young kid who you've probably seen on Instagram, on Worldstar, my man, his name, LGP Qua. All right, young MC from Philadelphia that Will I Am hooked up with. They just put out their first single, his first single, Insomniac. It's a banger. This kid was discovered by everybody. Everybody saw him rhyming on Instagram. Pete Rock. Large Professor, Will I Am, Nas, everybody saw him. As soon as I saw him, you knew he was special. We get a special, special interview. Will I Am and the young rapper from Philadelphia, Qua. Uh, it's the I Am Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. Let's do it. But before we get into it, before we get into it, I'm gonna give a shout out to my main man, Kobe Bryant, who I think just surpassed Michael Jordan. My man won a motherfucking Oscar the other night. Congratulations. Yo, only Kobe Bryant. First time out of the gate, that drive, the determination, would win an Oscar. Shout out to you. Shout out to all the Oscar winners. It's the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Miles, Jordan, let me get some funk. Let's go. All right. Have no fear. The I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast is here. The champs. Uh, my name is Michael Rappaport, aka Iron Mike Rappaport, aka Dingo Slice. Uh, you are now rocking with the very, very best. That beat that you hear underneath us uh, is a, a a beat crafted by G Moody. Last name rhymes with Duty. The three-time yep. podcast co-host of the year. Uh, we call that because I thought you should have named it Brick. Uh, in honor of our guy Leroy <laughs> from Brooklyn, yeah. uh, very very inside joke reference. Um, but that's that because, um, Mr. Moody, yes, or, or should I call you Champ? How you feeling, my yeah. man? I, I I'm feeling uh, splendid, man. I was just playing ball in uh, Pelham Parkway with my daughter, teaching her uh, uh, jump shot technique. So I'm 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 good. I feel a little sore. But I'm good. Were you, are you were you actually playing? Did you did you uh did you do something? Yeah, I yeah, I play with her to to uh you know try to show her and try to be aggressive with her so when she plays against a girl she has an advantage because she's been playing against a man and I play her as though she's a boy. <laughs> well, uh for those of you and unfortunately there's very little footage of of, of G Moody uh basketball, his prowess. But I could attest, and if you if you go around New York City, you speak to people uh, who 46, 47. Um, if you run into the great Kenny Anderson, he will attest. Uh, G. Moody was one of those formidable, under-the-radar dudes who would show up and bust your ass. Yes. And we're not Ramp? talking about yeah. we're not talking about some like little rinky dinky shit. We're talking about in the parks, in the gyms, playing against the best of the best, Riverside Church, Madison Square Broncos. G Moody was out there really, really doing it with with like Malik Seely and like B J Armstrong and like some of the BJ great Carter. B J Carter. I'm sorry, B J Carter and like the New York dudes, the wheelchair classic dudes from from our era. Like right, right. Like at 16, 17, 18, I think you were at your best. Like seventeen, eighteen. Like he was up there with with the best players uh, uh, in New yes. York. Uh, maybe not uh, at that that level. Obviously, going forward. Uh, played college, right. you know, a couple opportunities, fucked up, a couple of breaks he didn't get. But I will say this right now, G. Moody will bust your ass, okay? <laughs> that, that's a fact. That's a fact. And 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 and, right. what was your weight when you were about 18, 19? Uh, 160. 165. I was always wiry, thin, but the Brownsville in me uh, uh, didn't, it, that shit, uh, it's like, you know, you have that wiry strength. And just coming from Brooklyn and playing amongst the people in the dead of winter, it just it just forms that hardness about you. So you can play anywhere in the world. Yeah, uh, and, and I and I will I will uh, swear by that. 
Uh, I saw some wild shit uh, from Mr. Moody. He, he surpassed me at 16. Because uh, before that, you know, we were both kind of, uh, and then Moody just went to another level. Anyway, <laughs> we don't right. have any proof uh, uh, to, to, to show that. Uh, obviously, we don't fact check at the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast. Um, we pride ourselves on being the, the only podcast that truly doesn't fact check. Like when we're on here talking, anything can be said. That's right. And the ramifications Anything. are the ramifications. Like, we, we will go from the gut. Uh, we will speak from the soul. And we're probably going to get a bunch of things wrong. That, that, that is a fact. We're not fact-checking. Right. But it's a fact that we're probably going to uh, misquote people. Uh, we are going to get statistics wrong. And very important details. But that's the beauty of a non-fact-checking podcast. Right. And that's why we're the best. Because most people are like that. When you're in the street talking to your friends or whatever, you don't, you're not perfect, but it, it, it adds to the banter. It's great, and that's why they, we're the best in the fucking world. Oh, bro. we're the best. We're the fucking best. We're the champions. That's, that's, that's a, we, we, we take stands. We got fucking balls. As I said on the last podcast, and I'll say it again, we're the podcast hosts with the big swinging dicks that your mom warned you about. And I'm not. This isn't, I'm not, this isn't even talking to the to, to the women. This has no reference to the women. We're, we're the we're the podcast with the big swinging dicks that your mom warned you about. Okay, we yeah, come in yeah. there greased up. Rare. Okay. Hell yeah. That's that's who we are. Okay, the podcast host with the big swinging dicks. Listen, Moody. Let's just jump into this. Uh, All right. The Oscars. They happened. I got to be honest, I felt like it was a very safe Oscars with all the uh, stuff that's happened this year uh, with the women's uh, movement and the Me Too movement. Um, I felt like it was, you know, Jimmy Kimmel played it very safe. And I guess, you know, and I fuck with Jimmy. I, I fuck with yeah. Jimmy hard. I just saw Jimmy uh, a couple of weeks ago. I'm a fan. And I guess at a certain point you get handcuffed. You know, uh, I think gone are the days where you could have a shit talking host like Chris Rock. Uh, um, yeah, you know who could who could pop shit. I think we're we're in such a such a uh, like you don't want to yeah. become a hashtag on Twitter. Like oh Jimmy yeah. T- Jimmy Kimmel, and then like oh well Jimmy Kimmel made a joke about this, and some people are really upset. By the way, who oh. the fuck are those some people? Well, it takes away from the Oscars because a host. It's supposed to be funny, and you know you're watching it, so you know it's tongue-in-cheek. It's nothing personal. He's, it's funniness. So I, I don't understand it, but hey, that's what it is. Touchy-feely bullshit. Completely touchy-feely bullshit. Very, very uh, accurate way to say it. Uh, bullshit calls. The skinny genification of the Oscars. Um, they were very conscious about reminding anybody that wasn't a star to get the fuck up there and get the fuck off the stage. And I have to say, I understand... The art of film, uh, costume department, makeup department, sound, sound editing, editing, all that. You don't make right. a good movie or a good TV show, but but particularly movies, because the movies is a is a is a form where those things are they come more into play. Television, we watch it at home, we watch it on our fucking computer, we're even watching it on our phone. And unfortunately, and this is no disrespect to the artists that do all those things, um, but the average person doesn't care. And again, I'm saying this with all due respect. Um, but this Oscar show, you know, three hours of this shit. Uh, uh, and, and the reality is, is that the, the buildup is more exciting than the actual show. Right. The show is very long. It's very sterile. Now they're scared to make jokes about anything out, out of fear of getting lambasted and, you know, yeah. losing your job and your livelihood. And, and I was thinking about this. So many great actors won the awards. I wanted to give a shout out to Tiffany Haddish because I was thinking about her. Literally, probably now it's like eight months ago, before that movie came out, uh, Girls Trip, Yeah, the majority of the world didn't know who she is. I, I-, I seen her a couple of times do stand-up. I-, I had met her in passing. But she truly is like a Hollywood Cinderella story. Like less than a year ago. Let's just say that. She was... She was an, an unknown, you know, sh- you know, struggling. She talks about this comic actress. And now she's at the fucking Oscars. And I saw her at the pregame. And I was like, yo, this is, 
this is a wild story. Like her story, like she literally, now she's been rocking for years, but she literally got discovered, got an opportunity and boom, that movie Girls Trip came out and, and she's, she's on and popping. Like you're going to be hearing about Tiffany Haddish for the next, to you know, for as long as she keeps rocking. She'll be nominated for an Oscar. I want to be the first to say this. Uh, as a fan, because she's so, uh, we were talking about her her comedy once before. Tiffany Haddish's comedy, you know, obviously it's funny, um, but there's so much pain. There's so much clear right. pain in, in in her comedy, in her stand up comedy, and, and you can just tell at some point she's going to get the right dramatic part um, in the right dramatic film, and she's going to get nominated for an actress. Like she's a yeah. she's a true talent. Good for her, man. You know, but that's a testament to the greatness of, of America. Rags, you can go from rags to riches. Yeah, she definitely went from rags to riches. But, you know, the, like I said, the show was good. Um, uh, you, you guys know who won. You know who lost. It really doesn't... There was no faux pas. There was no fuck-ups last year. Remember the whole thing happened with Moonlight and La La Land and my man Warren Beatty? The consummate stick, man. The man has an entire building. The Warren Beatty building is on the Stickman Hall of Fame campus. There's a whole fucking building named after him. He was the butt of all the... Yo, Moody, he set the groundwork for not only just like the the, the current Stickman. He he taught the game to Jack Nicholson. Yeah, I'm surprised nobody came after him and said some shit where he was on some Me Too shit. He's lucky. You know what, though? I always say uh, there's a difference between a Stickman... And uh, 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 what is it? <laughs> There's a difference between a stick man and a piece of shit. Yes, that's the word right there. There's a difference between a, a stick man and say it again, a piece of shit. There you go. And and Warren Beatty, I mean, like yo, he set the groundwork. And I and I I can't remember who was all at the conversation, but I remember I was amongst some great Hollywood people, and I'd say this is around ninety seven, ninety eight, and they were talking about the work. The amount of uh, uh, the amount of work that Warren Beatty put in during the '60s, the '70s, and the '80s, oh. and, and they were just talking about the greatness what they had seen, uh, uh, mainly in the in the early like in the early '90s. He was knocking down Madonna when Madonna was in her prime. Yeah, yo, yeah. Warren Beatty was. I think he was like mid to late '60s. He was knocking down Madonna. He had Madonna all fucked up. You only live once. And Madonna was just like an afterthought to Warren Beatty. Like, he yeah. put in that good work. Um, but it was like around 97, uh, uh, 98, the consensus was that the great Leonardo DiCaprio had finally surpassed him. Maybe it was 99. Again, we don't fact check. It could have been 2000. The consensus was that the great Leonardo DiCaprio, who is the current heavyweight champion of all stick men, yeah, had yeah. surpassed him. What? Right after Titanic came out, it was just a run that we have. He's not done yet. DiCaprio yeah. is what? not done yet. The, the, the run continues, and we can hate all you want, you Huffington Post hipster fucks, and all you internet hipsters. You could say, oh, there's Leonardo with another 25-year-old banger. You're just mad because you're not with a 25-year-old banger. Yeah, yeah. Leave that man alone, man. It's one life. Everybody got a life to lead. He's classy. He has no problems. Let that man skeet. The women are not complaining. You'd be hard-pressed to find anybody that has anything negative to say about the great Warren Beatty during his reign and the great Leonardo DiCaprio currently during his championship reign. Speaking of championships... This is a championship podcast. As I yep. told you earlier, Will I Am, motherfucking Will I Am, producer, innovator. Extraordinary. I yeah. mean, yo, the dude is way beyond music. He he, he truly yeah. is an innovator, a forward thinker. Um, he's rocking with me on the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast. Got to sit down with him and this kid who I saw, like the rest of the world, just like Will I Am. Everybody saw him on Instagram. His name is Qua. His MC name is LGP. Qua, let's get paid. Yeah. That's what that stands for. He's oh, a young yeah. kid He's from nice. Philly that just started rhyming on Instagram over like old school beats. Like he would be rocking over like 
self-destruction, Big Daddy Kane beats, and like uh -huh. you know, and and he would go viral. He it, like I, everybody would post it. Pete Rock would post it. World Star would post it. Charlemagne would post it. I saw it. Like I would you when I saw him, you were like, "That's this is this guy's got it." Like he, he yeah, he's he, talented. He's nice. Yeah, he, yeah, no doubt. Young Philly kid. Um, so Will I Am uh, made his first official song with him. It's called Insomniac. Shit's dope. Um, and Will I Am is, is rocking with this dude, and and he sees something special in him. So we got to talk to Will I Am talking about so many different hip hop things. I even asked yeah. him about the Fergie situation because the reason why I asked him about the Fergie situation is, and I equated it to uh, Young MC Qua, uh, is because. Qua got discovered through the through the internet, social media, and the Fergie national anthem at the NBA All Star Game was such a true 2018 social media incident. Like it, it, it was like such a lambasting, and obviously she was uh, in Black Eyed Peas. So it's a dope yeah. interview with the two of them, and it was dope to be able to sit down with this kid because I feel like in five years uh, he's gonna be like, I don't remember you, Mike Rap, because he's gonna he's gonna blow the fuck up. Um, good, good, man. I like hip hop, and uh, you know, I was kind of uh, discouraged from with the shit I hear on the radio when I'm in the car driving Imani to school, my daughter. And uh, I just want to hear uh, a guy speak, and I can understand the words. That, that's that, it. That's all I ask for right now. You're not asking for a lot. It, it, it's just like you just want some basic ingredients in your food. Um. And so we got to talk about that and, and, and just, you know, beat making and, so, you know, some of the beats that Will has made. And, you know, like he's very, under, very understanding and very clear on like, yo, I'm making a pop record here. I'm making a, 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 a rap record here. I'm making an underground record here. We got to talk about all that shit. It's a dope interview. Dope, dope, dope interview coming up later in the show. Um, but when I was talking about championship podcasting, there was a championship fight right there in Barclays uh, the other night. Um, and they it was they got it on. Uh, Deontay Wilder and my man Luis Ortiz from Cuba, two big 235-pound heavyweight dudes, they put it down. Um, and it was mm. a great fight. Um, it was a um, dramatic fight. And it was one of the better heavyweight fights that I've seen in a long time because they were they were big, but it wasn't like that rock'em sock'em robot. Klitschko type of shit. Like they were, they were out there, they were out there swinging and banging. Oh, so it was good. I didn't see it. So they were, they were going at it. Were were, were they uh, tactical or was it just two fucking big galoots punching each other in the face? No, no, no. They were the tactical. Face? I mean, they're they're definitely big galoots. But this dude, Luis Ortiz, Luis, he's Cuban. Um, he's you know been one of these Cuban fighters that's never gotten a shot. You know, he's Cuban, so he's been caught up in you know all the politics of, of being a an athlete over there. And it was tactical, oh. but they were banging. They were definitely banging, okay. but De Deontay Wilder uh, was, was in trouble. He had gotten knocked down. It looked like it was over. And he finally, he, he won by a tactical uh, move. Um, so if you can't, if you haven't seen that fight, uh, you should try to check it out. I'm sure they're replaying it on Showtime because they got it on. They okay. were thugging in, in, in that shit. So uh, uh, it, was, it was a dope fight. Also... Premiering on the 5th of March, which is when you should probably be listening to this, me and the young shooter, remember when I talked about going up to uh, Oakland to see the Warriors play? Well, well me and the yeah. young shooter started doing some shit with Kevin Durant. All right. Wow. He got his YouTube channel, and he brought up the MVP of Talking Trash, that's me, uh, right. to talk some shit. And, and we talked some shit, and the premiere of... The, the little series uh, that we're doing with Kevin Durant uh, is on his YouTube channel. The shit's funny. Uh, later on, uh, you know, in the, in the series, we do an actual shame game with Kevin Durant. And the thing that I love about the shame game with Kevin Durant is people, including G. Moody and myself, but including G. Moody, the three-time podcast co-host here, continue to talk shit. To Kevin Durant. Everybody's got something to say about Kevin Durant. So what do you do yeah. if you want to yeah. nip that in the butt? You bring in me, and we blast your ass on the motherfucking shame game. So that's coming <laughs> on Kevin Durant's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, but the, the, the premiere episode uh, is starting uh, March 5th, and then you know we're going to keep dropping them throughout the rest of the season. And it was dope. Okay. I'm looking forward to seeing that. It's, it's, it, the thing that I, lo I love about it is that 
he's very aware of his persona and how he's perceived. And when I got to meet Durant, the first thing I realized right away is that he uh, he's in on the joke. Like, he's in on the joke. And also, his, his Kevin Durant, his KD uh, uh, personality that we see in the media, I literally would say is probably half of who he is in real life. He's so much oh. more relaxed, funny, got a great sense of humor, loves to talk shit, and just really has a great sense of humor. He loves the McGregors. If you haven't seen the McGregors uh, on uh, the Instagram page, it, it, it's another... Uh, it's another fan favorite, but he thinks it's like, I mean, he's like watching Kevin Durant, like fucking giddy laughing at that shit. It's just not oh, what worth. you see when you see Kevin Durant. You just, we don't, you like a lot of these players, they're really like politicians. They're, they're sort of hands off and they're guarded because they live in a bubble and a 24 seven reality show. Right, right, right. I want to shout out the brave paratroopers that hit me up um, on direct message. I was cool in the crib, got a message from paratroopers from Afghanistan. They love the show. They love me and you rap. And um, I want to shout these brave motherfuckers out from the 1501 Parachute Infantry Regiment holding it down in Afghanistan. My man Sergeant Belmonte, so hope mm. I'm saying it right, Sergeant Corwell, and the whole regulating regiment out there parachuting down and seizing the whole area just like we do. We're podcast paratroopers. We mm. seize this whole shit, and they do the same. And these brave uh, cats from the military just want to say, stay safe, keep holding it down, and come home safe. Absolutely, yo. The fact that, listen, we, we the fact that people even listen to us, let alone people over there, like like doing what they're doing, and they even know that we exist. Yo, nothing but love, nothing but respect. Uh, be Word. safe. Anybody who rocks with us, uh, we, you, I can't tell you how much uh, we appreciate it. Uh, uh, you may or may not know, me and G Moody have been rocking off mic since 1982. So shout out to anybody who fucks with the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, especially people like that that are keeping us safe and uh, you know protecting protecting all our rights, all our civilities, and, and everything like that. Yo, another thing that happened, G, I, I, I forgot to tell you, after that fight in New York. Right. There's these two f young fighters, the Charlo twins. There's two of them. Young dudes, pretty boys, boxers. They're ass kickers. They showed them before the fight. I've seen them both fight. They're, they're, they're literally identical twins. Identical right. twin ass kickers. Um, they were there at the at Barclays watching the, uh, the Wilder-Ortiz fight. So they went out to the 40-40 club. They was right. out there chilling with the chicks and all that. For some fucking reason, one of these twins had $150,000 in cash and jewelry on him. I don't know why. Why would you That's have $150,000 in cash and jewelry on you? Why would you have a hundred? Why, why do you need that much money? That's just to show off for the chicks where you can have that brick of money in your pocket. It's just to show off. That's why he's doing it. Well, they were at the 4040 Club. Shout out to Jay-Z. And one thing led to another, and these chicks got the bag, the Louis Vuitton bag, that one of these twins left unattended. Again, I don't understand if you have that shit, why isn't it like stuffed down your fucking pants like a $10 bag of Buddha in the 80s? Like why do you have a Louis Vuitton bag unattended with all that shit in there? I just, I don't get it. You deserve to lose it. <laughs> if it's unattended and you got that much paper in it, you deserve... To lose it. It's unattended and it's your money and you try to show off and you leave it there. Yo, it's gone. And that's it. Charge that to the game. Over. Good for you. <sighs> Fucking crazy, man. And speaking of Jay-Z, yo, this this dude George Zimmerman, the guy who got off scot-free after killing Trayvon Martin. This guy's talking. Yeah. The fact that this guy is, is out here free, living, living free, wandering around is crazy to me. This guy's trying to talk shit to Jay-Z. Yeah, I, I, I guess he feel, I killed the motherfucker. I, I, I can talk shit to anybody. <laughs> Yo, that's good. This is, G, I, don't know, I just want to point this out. See, this is why you're, 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 you're the podcast co-host of the year. That, that's it. He, that's, a, that's exactly what he thinks. He's like, I'll fuck you up, Jay-Z, if, if push comes to shove. 
Right. We all know that I won't gotta, happen. We all know that George Zimmerman should be rotting away somewhere. And 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 just by the way he's living his life and the things he's doing, uh, you know he's rotting away internally. I mean, I have ulcerative sort of colitis. I can't imagine what the fuck this animal has. <laughs> he's like, yo, I got a body. This is his mindset, his his weird mindset. I got a body and I beat the case. So who's more thug life than me? Jesus. So some rapper is talking shit and I got a body? Fuck him. That's his mindset. Jesus Christ. Um, I want to get into these sick fucks of the week. All right, before we get to Will I Am and my man Qua, LGP Qua, uh, who you should follow on Instagram if you already don't follow him. He's got tons of followers. Um, LGP yeah, underscore Qua, Q. U-A. Support, support real hip hop. Support these guys that that are that are rocking like like yesteryear, because this shit out here is disgraceful, yo. Support these people who are rocking like they're supposed to rock. Miles Jordan, let me get that sick fuck of the week music. This award is earned, not given. It's called the sick fuck of the week. This guy's really sick. Lock him up. Could you do it? Don't let him out. Damn. You fucked the dog? You what? You fucked the dog? Why would you fuck the dog? Why would you fuck your girlfriend's dog? What? Sick fuck. The sick fuck of the week. It's earned. Earned. Not given. You did. What? No. 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 no! Yes. Yes. This is the sick fuck of the week segment the award-winning sick fuck of the week segment this is an award that is earned not given earned not given okay there is a difference um it goes out to a certain person with a certain je ne sais quoi um now before i get into the specific sick fucks of the week we all i hope you all saw the coyote video um in my neighborhood my residential neighborhood um, if you're from the city, it appears like it's some Brady Bunch shit, but my, my block is, is residential. Like the off street, you're, you're in the city of Los Angeles. Okay. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because a couple of months ago, uh, early on a Sunday morning, I saw a coyote roaming around uh. my suburban neighborhood. I don't live in the Hills. I live in a, a very like, you know, you walk and shit like that. I saw a coyote. I follow the coyote. The coyote uh, went into the bushes. The coyote was looking at me like, what you going to do? And, and my response to myself was, not a goddamn thing. I'm scared <laughs> shit. Um, do they attack? Do they attack uh, people or they just... Oh, what I'm happens? Getting to I that. never see a coyote. I'm getting to that. I'm getting okay. to that. Okay? And a lot of people were like, you, you're a pussy. You're scared. Because you could hear me. You could literally hear me going, ah. Like, I was scared of the coyote. Okay, then he ducked his head down into like the bushes. You could see his head. He ducked his head down into the bushes, picked up a dead cat, which he had already killed and hid and walked the fuck off like, what you going to do, pussy? And I continued to cry and scream just like the pussy that the coyote thought I was. And I got people thought it was funny, but I got ridiculed. You're a punk. Why didn't you do something? All this kind of shit. Well, the joke's on you, asshole, because in the Yonkers part of New York. Yonkers, New York, what? which is just a which is just a piss hole away from where G Moody lives in the Bronx, right? How Jada far away Kiss. is Yonkers from you, G? Uh 10 minutes. Jada Kiss, DMX, Locks, all that good stuff. <laughs> a coyote bit several people in Westchester County. Yeah. A coyote bit several people and Damn. the coyote was rabid. That means the oh. motherfuckers got rabies. Oh. The coyotes also killed small dogs and mauled three sheep. So when you see me screaming and crying and carrying on because I see a coyote in my residential neighborhood, when I'm walking my dog Wheezy, who, who whose only trick is sitting down, couldn't defend himself if he tried, poor fucking thing. I don't want to be ridiculed and teased and shamed. It's not fair to me. Okay, there's a fucking coyote on the loose and Yonkers. Oh. It's biting people. I post my video to share it. Rappaport, you're a pussy. What are you? Fuck you. That's what I say. Fuck you. 
You, you thought it was funny, didn't you, Moody? You're like, oh, you're screaming and carry on about the Coyote. Go up to Yonkers since you're so crunk. I walk, but if there's coyotes and you know there's coyotes and your dog is soft, you got to carry a hammer <laughs> just in case. So if he run up on you, you got the hammer, you just hit him. You just boom. <laughs> You're protecting yourself. And it's, <laughs> it's a shame <laughs> that a human being with a dog <laughs> got to protect the dog. <laughs> that is, that's shameful. <laughs> so you got to carry, you got to carry the hammer. All right, first sick fuck of the week, Minnesota. Authorities in Minnesota are searching for a male suspect who beat an elderly man, uh, this gentleman, in East Bethel, Minnesota, a road rage incident. Uh, the, the, the angry driver was driving erratically, taunting the victim, and then got out. The guy's about 80-something years old and just beat him up. You know, there's pictures of the guy. It's really sad. I, it's like a 35-year-old guy. Uh, with a buzz cut, uh, he was driving a dark silver or gray car. If you're in Minnesota and you find this piece of shit in Ham yeah. Lake, uh, report him. He beat up a guy. Could have been any one of our uh, fathers, grandfathers, or uncles. Yeah. This is the sick fuck of the week on the loose in Minnesota. Yeah. What's up with the police out there in Minnesota? This is somebody you could get extra work in. Get some extra credit. Don't report it to the, to the commander. Just drive his ass somewhere behind a mall and maul his ass. <laughs> Second sick fuck of the week. A Polish company, I can't even pronounce it, put out a pair, you know, socks with personalities? They put out a pair of socks with personalities in the personality of Hitler. The socks have pictures of Hitler on the socks. And they said, and I quote, they were designed to, quote, bring order in the socks drawer. Duke, that shit ain't funny, Duke. Oh, yeah. Fuck is you doing? You putting I, out I, Hitler I don't socks, know. you think that shit is dope? That shit's not yeah. dope. What's, what's the fascination with this guy? They, it's like, I don't understand the fascination with, 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 with somebody like that that has done so much, you know, carnage in the world, and it's always like a fascinating... I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> it, it. It's like a forbidden fruit, man. It's a forbidden fruit. People want to well, get away with what they could get away with, and, and, and they want to they want to see see how much they could get away with. They need to find these guys. They need to find these guys that made the socks. You know what I mean? I know. I, yeah, it's not like this guy succeeded at anything. You know what I'm saying? Like he he was conquered, over with. So I I, I don't know. I don't know why they hold him in so high regard. Uh, the third sick fuck of the week in Long Island. <laughs> In Long Island, New York, where my mother is from, where the great Lyle Alzado, Howard Stern, Method Man, the great Dr. J, and even that fuck, Anthony Scaramucci EPMD. is from. EPMD? Don't forget EPMD, that. EPMD, oh, it's Ro De La Soul and so on and so on. R Rakim? The great Rakim. I don't want to go down a yeah. whole Long Island <laughs> rabbit hole. They were in a movie theater in Long Island. There was a toddler making noise, probably at a kid's movie. They didn't say what film it was. A guy named Charles Carmen and his wife, Carrie Carmen, are being charged with endangering the welfare of a child. The noisy child was apparently disrupting and annoying these two sick fucks so much that this lunatic... Went over to the little baby, the two-year-old, and dumped popcorn all over her head. Imagine you're in the movie theater, you're at like Finding Nemo or something like that. Right. And your kid's, you know, messing up or something like that, making noise. And, and some lady and some psych, some sick fuck of the week come pour popcorn all over you. Oh, man. The movie got to cut off. Like, like, no more movie. We have to deal with this now. Now, I'm going to turn this into a movie. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's fantastic. Um, finally, the fourth and final sick fuck of the week, the North Texas teenager who actually won the sick fuck of the week uh, in 2017, she falsely accused three black men, her words, she said she was kidnapped and raped by three black men. She will serve no jail 
time. Oh, no good judge too. I mean, Damn. how could you? How can you get away with this? How can you right. accuse three men of something so, they yeah. didn't do that could have inevitably had them wind up in prison? Anyone, you know how they just ramp, they just dragnet black people and then put them in the lineup, and then she could just pick one out, and then the jury is going to be all uh, all white. You know how many times this has happened in this country, and the judge sees this, and he and that doesn't deserve any punishment. This is why people are the way they are. This is why, it, like, motherfuckers don't have no faith in this system because of that sucker shit like that. If I'm a judge, you got to get some time for that. Yo, you have to get some time for that. You have to get real time for that. Yeah. Like this, 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 that's crazy. The judge is a sick fuck, and she's the fuck sick fuck. Finally, the yeah. fifth, I'm going to say one more cherry on top. Uh, one more sick fuck. A cyclist in Queens... Queens, New York, a lot of stuff's happening right there in our city of New York. A cyclist riding on a bike swooped by a 92-year-old woman, knocked her down, and took her purse and rode off on some Lance Armstrong shit. You sick fuck of the week. It's on videotape. They're looking for this guy. It happened in Astoria. Shout out to our guy, Greek George. Word. Keep your head on a swivel out there in Astoria, Queens. Shame on you, you sick fuck you. That's it. That's it. Miles Jordan, listen. Let's get to it. Will I am. LGP Qua. Let me get some of that insomniac. It's the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. Interview for the ages. Let's do it. Let me hear something. Let me hear that insomniac. Let's get to it. Woke. Shout out the Eagles, we did it, we brought the ring back So when I tell you change gonna come, better believe that Go get a diploma, young and saying I don't need that He ran the grip of 30, rob a nigga with a ski mat Streets is with a good die, young man, it's sad to say Just graduated Friday, got killed Saturday If you get a job, they laugh at you, that's the petty wave If you go to jail, they don't care, they think you passed away Back then, niggas, they was with you, not the same now Nowadays, your own man to rob you, look at A-Town Colin Kaepernick, I support you Hands down, taught us how to stand up Why you think we nailed down? Valentine's Day turned to a massacre when shots through. 17 people got killed in the floor of high school. Tell these little girls you a queen, that's the right move. More than life than twerking on the gram and getting likes, boo. Time to stop the hating. Time to make improvement now. Time to stop the killings and shootings and all the suicide. From the city, brotherly love, you know it's do or die. Time to come together, stick together like a unibrow. I don't sell my soul because my pride won't allow it. I ain't selling drugs, no. I'm just giving knowledge. Younger had a bright future. Could have went to college, but he chilled with his boys on the corner, then they shot him. All right. It's I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. Will I Am LGP Qua in the dope ass studios with the modern bathrooms, the toilets that I think you could get like a California roll in those toilets, man. <laughs> All right, but before we get into this, I have to ask you this in general terms, Will. The whole Fergie backlash, to see that happen, did you see that coming? And like, did you just want to like sort of be like interfere? Because, like, I didn't see that whole thing coming. It took on a life of its own. We all have things that we want to, you know, execute. And it, the way you vision them in your head versus the way they're executed sometimes are two totally different things. Right. And the way that you get to uh, executing them the way they are exactly in your head is your surroundings and you know, practice, right? Because you, your surroundings will help guide you to make sure that you execute them the way they are in their head and the way that you describe them to your surroundings. I got you. Um, and, and to me, that was such an indicative thing of the internet 2018 and, and how everybody has an opinion, good, bad, or indifference, which brings me to my man here who got discovered. I saw you on Instagram. I don't know if it was Pete Rock's page I don't know if it was, I mean, you're, you, you know, when you started rhyming up there, people responded quickly, which is very 2018. It's like in 2018, like you could literally be like, I want to be a rapper. Be like, all right. You could literally get on the internet, spit some shit and motherfuckers will find you. 
if you want to be an actor, I tell people like how to get an act and go, listen, if you don't have a break, get on fucking Instagram, do some, do some monologues. Motherfuckers will find you. Mm -hmm. So Qua, when you started uh, getting response on, uh, on Instagram, when did you like, what, what, what did that mean to you? Oh no, that meant a lot to me, especially the response I got back from my city. It was crazy. Uh, who, uh, country cooking put me up. A couple of rappers in my city put me up. Then celebrities start putting me up. It was a crazy feeling. Like it, it, it all was happening so fast. Who, was who was the first celebrity that retweeted you, reposted you, or, or put you up where you were like, oh shit? Uh, the first celebrity that put me up, I think, I think it was Pete Rock. Pete Rock. That's pretty good. Uh, it was Pete Rock. It's a pretty good hip hop celebrity. So, so when did you see him? Will. And, and you know you you see you've seen artists for year after year after year going back to when people probably were handing you mixtapes to mix CDs to spitting in front of you. When did you see Qua and, and what was it about him that stuck out for you? So I saw Qua on Pete Rock's feed. I follow Pete Rock, but I've been following Pete Rock before Instagram. I've been following Pete Rock and his beats since you know Pete Rock and CL Smooth and all of his. Tracks that he's produced for, you know, a Trap Called Quest and you know, the Jump Around remix. Uh, P Rock's like one of my favorite producers of all time. So when I see the things that he reposts, I take heed. But even if it wasn't on Pete Rock's feed, I would have probably felt the same way Pete Rock felt about Qua if I had saw it just scrolling. Um, and what I liked about it was it was flawless emotionally, lyrically, and then he had the squad around him and, it's, you know, seeing what, you know, what people gravitate towards nowadays to see a squad around just like a, a rapid fire, you know, arsenal just hitting you with freaking quotables and the, the delivery and the flow was ill. I'm like, wow, imagine if this dude had beats of his own, though. Oh, hell no. I need to try to work with this cat. If I could do the same type of production that I would do for a Nas or a Hip Hop is Dead or a game like Compton, for this kid, oh, hell no. I need to get out that side of my production skills because I haven't really had somebody to force me to, you know, to push me to, uh, to produce that way since, you know, a Talib Kweli track like Hot Damn or, you know, uh, a game or a Nas. There, there's that side of me that wants to just produce like that all the time. And that's how I felt when I when I saw that, um, you know, Qua on Pete Rock's feed. But then I'm like, well, that means Pete Rock's going to produce some before I do. If I only could get around this dude ASAP. And so then I seen him backstage at at a at an event that Nas was hosting. You saw Qua. Qua. I saw Qua backstage at an event that Nas was hosting. And I'm like, yo, what up, Nas? We need to get back in. Oh, that's Qua. And I've seen him in the corner writing rhymes while everyone was smoking and drinking and chit-chatting. I'm like, oh nah. Like, what is the what are the odds of this encounter? I was just talking about this dude two weeks ago. And here he is. The Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> <laughs> Jehovah and Buddha and Muhammad and all the prophets made sure that our paths aligned. <laughs> and all right, so because I want to, I want to jump into this production thing because you've done all sorts of production, and and you know uh, like the joints you just did, the Compton joint for a game was a banger, and he even says, you I, either you or Game says, yo, show him you could do that, and it's like that. -na 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 -na. Oh yeah, that that was a uh, 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 don't trip. Check it out now. Check it out now, check it out, uh huh. It's like that, yeah. It's like that now. It's like that, uh huh. It's like that now. That black 45, I gotta put it on. That chrome Glock 9, I gotta put it on. That 38 special, I gotta put it on. Never leave the house without the Teflon. Hop off. I did Don't Trip. That was actually that was eight years ago. Actually, sorry, 12 years ago I did Don't Trip for me. And Ice Cube, I, I ran into Ice Cube, I was like, yo, let's work on a song. I had that on my hard drive sitting around for 12 years, bro. 
I got Nas joints on my hard drive sitting around. I got Michael Jackson Can joints. Can you play one right now, like for the podcast? I'm just fucking. I with got you. Whitney Houston joints, Michael Jackson joints. I got a I got a vault full of stuff because I just like to work to work. Right. Whether it's gonna come out, but every time I do like a pop song, because I, I I'm a scientist. If I make a pop song, trust me, I, when, as I'm telling you, I'm going in like a scientist to try to figure out how to hit as many people as possible. And when, and when I do that. To do to balance it off, I'll go and do me like a to keep my underground freaking liquid sword sharp. I'll go and do an obscure hunting for samples type of record with verses, murder verses, you know, lyrical freaking like metaphorical, you know, decapitators. I'll do a joint like that just to keep me brushed up. I got you. So you're aware of like this is a pop song, this is a hip hop song. The song that you guys just put out, which is a banger, Insomniac, is not a traditional clean Will I Am Black Eyed Peas, the mega, mega, mega fucking world stopping joints. It's a hip hop joint. It's dusty. It's dirty. It's grimy. Why that sound for him? And and in this day and age, and I want to hear about this, in this day and age when we know production, especially in hip-hop, because we could talk about lyricists being fucked up, but it all starts with the beats. In my opinion, even more so than the lyrics being fucked up in today's hip-hop, the beats are all really fucked up. So that insomniac beat, and, and you know, the way he's been presenting himself on Instagram where it's like, you know, there is crew rocking around you. And like the first time I saw you and then you wind up doing the self-destruction beat. Like I was like, it immediately reminded me of self-destruction. Then I saw you rock over the self-destruction beat. I said, I said self-destruction hit it for it. Shit ain't getting better for us. Building new jails, man, I'm cracking, getting ready for us. Kids getting light, so now the parents really stressing for us. Where I'm from, niggas down fight, they, they pull a weapon, weapon on you. Everything I talk is all facts, this reality. Bullets flying, bodies dropping, and police brutality. They booked a 16-year-old Girl, fuck the common wild. How the fuck you give all that time to try to defend yourself? Gangas keep on fucking up their life. I'm getting tired. You wanna know the reason? Cause they never had a father figure. I was dead broke, man. I never had a pot to piss. All I ever had was my mom. She always rocked the wood. Voice of the youth, so I'ma speak for my community. Everybody hating. Why you think it ain't no unity? Old niggas always acting petty. Nothing new to me. I was just with you. I end up at the eulogy. The revolution shall be televised. I hope you listen. They bringing back slavery. Look at this shit in Libria. Shackles on their feet and their hands. Shit ridiculous. Trying to put his back in the field. Cotton, you picking it. R.I.P. to all of my niggas. Moment of style. Now bring the beat back because I just bought it. <laughs> so specifically with the song that you guys did, uh, uh, what, what was your mentality to sort of match where Young Kwa is doing his thing? So let me name all the reasons why I like Kendrick Lamar. I like Kendrick Lamar not just because he's a lyrical mastermind, he made sure that he has a sonic, you know, uniform that goes with his, you know, his rhyme structures. And he, right there, there it, it's a whole entire thought. What does that mean, sonic, to, to layman's terms? So when you think of Q-Tip's flow, there's a sonic scape that goes with it. And he, and it matches perfectly. When I think of freaking Anderson Pack, his flow and his sing-songy rap... And his lyrics go with the sonic production. And whether or not you like, you know, people like, you know, spooky rap. What I call spooky rap is like, you know, haunted music thing, thing, thing. You know, it sounds like somebody about to die in a <laughs> horror film type of beats. And that type of beat goes with the trap. The trap and the lyric, it all goes together. Whether you like it or not, that is a sonic scape. I got you. So when I hear LGP Qua. In my mind's eye, I'm like, oh shucks, I already see the Sonicscape to go with his, you know, his rapid fire flow, the subject matters that he's talking about. You know, he could have been, if this was the sixties, he could have been in the last poets. Got you. Right. If this was the nineties, he would have been hanging out with, you know, digging in the crates, he would have been hanging out with all them cats. You know, if this was, you know, the early two thousands, I don't really know early two thousands. Who the fuck knows who he'd be hanging out with then? Early 2000s, he would have been hanging out with <laughs> some guy, some cool dude. That's what things without got, a record deal and shit. No, Jay Z. Jay Z was okay. ill in early 2000s. Okay. He held it down got for you. all the true school stuff. Got you. If this was early 80s, he would have been down with you know Melly Mel and them. Got you. Right. And when you think of Melly Mel and them, there is a Sonic Skate. I got. When you, you think of freaking Nas, you hear it. You know you you know it's hands down. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, early early 2000s, Kanye. Early 2000s, yes. right? Yes. And uh, 
early 2000s Slum Village. Got you. Right. Early 2000s Dilla. Got you. Right. There you go. Right. Dilla, early 2000s. Held Got it you. down. There wouldn't be a Kanye without a Dilla. Yes. There wouldn't be a me without a Tip and a Dilla. Right. But then there wouldn't be the Black Eyed Peas as you know it as a global group if it wasn't for Kwame, Kid and Play, Queen Latifah, Heavy D. So when you think of, you know, hip hop, Heavy D is hip hop. Right, the theme song for Living Color. There wouldn't be a freaking Jim Carrey if it wasn't for Living Color. There wouldn't be a Jamie Foxx. I got there you. wouldn't be a J Lo. Living Color is hip hop as it gets. Right, right. Black Eyed Peas is like that version of hip hop where you can hate MC Hammer all you want. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be at the Grammys. I got we you. We wouldn't have be. We wouldn't. You know, people wouldn't see hip hop as like a world stadium selling form of music. I got you. So. When I think of Qua, I'm like, oh, shucks. I know exactly the Sonic scape to bring to this cat. And I got you. Just like how you, like I said, when you think of Kendrick, the Sonics complete the thought. And, and, and his Sonics, but not only that, Kendrick's video is an ill too. Right. He's that artist. And who's the next? Who's, who's in there like seeing the whole complete thought? You know, and it's not about money here. Mm-hmm. This is like, yo, let's let's collaborate. Mm-hmm. You know, forget what the deal is. Let's just freaking make music mm-hmm. right now. So, I got my whole crew. Like, yo, we going to. So he he, he when he did because they showed me the verse to to the song Insomniac, and when he showed me the verse, it was over uh, um, party and party and bullshit. Okay, right? he, he he spit over that. So I'm like, I mean, that's a dope beat, but that's no matter what, I'ma always think of Biggie, right. Um, and I could find the original sample that he sampled. We could flip that, but I'm still gonna think of Biggie. And he was, and, and he did an Instagram post. He was about to do an Instagram post of him rhyming by the Hollywood sign. I'm like, yo, let me do a beat right quick. Give me 30 minutes. If I could do a beat in 30 minutes, let's go. So I went in the studio, did a beat in 30 minutes, and then from there I was like, okay, I'm gonna finish it because right now the the blueprint of this sounds nice. So then we, I finished it that night. And I was like, yo, let's shoot a video ASAP. Called my camera crew and everybody. I was like, yo, let's go to Skid Row. Just on some impromptu, no permits. We're going out there. We're shooting a video. No, no. Hell no. And when we went to Skid Row, people was like, hey, Will I am. It's good to see you again. I know your aunt. She worked at the homeless shelter. You know, because my family still over out in, you know, right down the street from Skid Row. And you don't go to Skid Row with security guards. You don't go to Skid Row, you know, making folks feel you know, smaller than they are due to circumstances. You go there trying to, and connecting with people heart to heart and they going to give you the pass. As mm-hmm. soon as you go there with police, then they, then you, you put yourself at risk because they're like, Oh, you think you better than us? Right. So you got to go people to people. And we did that. That was yeah. the most beautiful experience, bro. That's dope. So young MC, young rapper, how did you start rhyming? When did you start rhyming? Why did you start rhyming? I always had a passion for music from day one. As coming up, I always had a passion for music. I always could recite anybody bar. Anybody bar who I like, I could recite it like that. And the way I did it was like if it was mine. Uh, I officially started writing like two years ago, like 2016. That's when I was, all right, I'm coming out. This is what I want to do. And I, you know, back and forth out of jail kind of slowed me up. But this time around... I got my mindset. I was focused. And then I just been going there ever since. And what sort of prompted you to start making these videos? I did it. At first, I did it in the attention that I just came back home. From? And from jail. From you upstate. got locked up. Yeah, I was locked up and I was upstate. I just came upstate home. Upstate in Philly? Yeah, Philly. This was in Philly. Okay. I just came home. And, I, you know, I'm a rapper. I just wanted to, to get out there. But when I start rapping, like really rapping how I wanted to rap, then it was just, that was my thing. Every week, I do a video every week. Every week, let it build up. I'm coming next week, coming next week. And then a week, a certain week, November 15th to be exact, I dropped the freestyle about the Meek Mill situation and a couple other situations. And from there, the response was so crazy. The feedback was so crazy. Of course, so many eyes and so much attention. Like, who is this young boy talking? How he talking? Like, what's going on? You see a group of kids out there with him, too. So once that started happening, it was just a, like everything fell in line. I don't trust nobody to unstrap with a fist. My trade count seven longer than my chances of living. Fuck a 10 story crib, man. I'm born in the trip. With 18 years old, a lot of niggas ain't living. Niggas dying around here. Mama's crying around here. You see a op doing dirty shots right around here. They gave me the two to four for a violation. But gave me Rachel for six months. This shit is getting crazy. See this shit they do to us? Ain't nothing new to us. Night lives matter, but the cops still shoot 
there's a white man kill a black man, he on his way home. But they kill a black man for pulling out his cell phone. That's why these young boys so quick to pick their pistol up. That's why these little girls so quick to get their pussy up. Second chance, we ain't never get him. We ain't good enough. We don't give a fuck about us. We ain't rich enough. Every week I talk that real shit, I know y'all feeling it. Every month I build a new jail just to put us. Every year I lose a close homie, it's ridiculous. How the fuck y'all get that man life when he was in a free meat, man? Now, because because you're so young and and you look so young, and like I've heard rappers proudly say, young kids call them rappers. I do it with fucking parentheses because I don't even think it's rap. Proudly say like I never heard a Wu Tang record. I I never. And I'm like, that's like a basketball player saying like, yo, I never heard of Dominique Wilkins. Like what the fuck? Like you're proud that you never heard a Wu Tang record, but your style and the shit that you're talking about is so. And I don't like this old school. Like, it's so classic. It's so true hip-hop. But you're, you're so young. W where is that coming from? What I do is, my technique is, I would like to incorporate that old feel when hip-hop was hip-hop, like the era of it, the essence of it, everything. But I just want to keep it still relevant to my era. So the best way to do that is to just put them both together. That way, you still being true to what you believe in with your era, but you still letting the OGs know or the older ones be for them you, that, y'all, listen, you paved the way, and I respect that, so this my, you mean, bring y'all that life back. And that's what I try to do. That's what I, every week, you know, is it feel good when you know, I knew I was actually doing something when my first video I watched of me in the classroom was in D.C. The teacher put me up for the kids in her classroom to play all that and that and that that touched me. Then Drexel College, I went over there speaking to a couple board members, letting them know how I feel. I don't want to just be the guy that talk about what, what I want to do. I'm gonna actually be the one that do it. And then went to the school. I went to my elementary school, did a lot of talking for the kids, and it's just like I like to balance it out though. I like to let the kids know it's cool. Like it's cool to be a nine to five working person. Like you I mean, oh, I don't pop perks. That's cool. What's wrong with that? That's cool to me. You good. Right. That's so, what I really liked when I first met him. Man, was. Yeah, and he I, was just and sitting there writing that. lyrics, and everybody, like I said, was smoking and drinking, and Nas was like, yo, we'll help yourself to some drinks. You want to smoke? I was like, ah, I don't smoke. But the room was so filled with smoke, everybody was smoking, but I don't, I don't smoke. So I was like, hey, do you mind if I make a drink? And so I'm like, yo, you don't drink? You don't smoke? He was like, nah, I'm just writing my lyrics. I'm... I was like, yo, I, I really got to work with this dude because he's focused, 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 focused. I don't know why he was so focused because most kids, they want to be about it, but they make excuses on their slack of focus. And, you know, it's 20 years. So the gap that you, that we are feeling from like, you know, that true school era, that's 20 years ago, bro. It's equivalent to when Tribe was doing they stuff in the 90s. 20 years before that, was 70s music, Roy Ayers. But Roy Ayers didn't produce Trap Called Quest. 20 years ago, you were hunting for records, Herbie Hancock samples. Herbie Hancock was not producing for, you know, uh, uh, Mob Deep and them. And, you know, Donald Byrd did not produce uh, Black Moon. Mm -hmm. They just sampled it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, 20 years ago, we started the Black Eyed Peas. I wish I could... And I'm not comparing myself to the to the Donald Birds. I'm not comparing myself to Earth, Wind, and Fire. I'm not comparing myself to to Cooling the Gang. But had I had the opportunity when I first started the Black Eyed Peas to work with those folks, would I have? Hell yeah! Mm. So I want to work with the folks that are that. When I see the artists in in Qua, I see myself when I was his age trying to come on. I'm like, oh, if I could just if I make a beat. He like it, great. If I don't, if he don't, well, then I really got to push myself to make this dude like my beat. How do you, Qua, have the, the confidence and the balls if Will gives you a beat and you might not want to rock over it to be like, uh, this ain't, this, this not for me. Not saying it's whack, but like, have you gotten to that point where you'd be like, yo, that's a dope Will I Am beat, but that's not the dope Will I Am beat for me. You know what I mean? Because it's like, it's like you're working with, like, I, even I'd be like, you know, like, oh, fuck, I don't know what the fuck. Yeah, okay, I'll rhyme over. But if you're not <laughs> feeling it, have you been? Have you gotten to that point with this with this guy yet? Well, good thing about that is I haven't gotten to that. Tell him point. right now. You yeah, told me outside. He gave you a fucking beat that was trash. Tell him right now. Let's get it out on the <laughs> no, table. No, that has to happen. Like, tell what? him. 
But that's Say, a- tell him about the beat he gave you that you thought was fucking whack. <laughs> let's fucking have this. Let's just get it out on the table. No. He told me you made him one fucking egg. He didn't want to rock over it. No, <laughs> but that <laughs> that kind of stuff. That's what causes. That's the ingredients for awesome collaboration. When you're honest, like if he had a bar, I'm like, I don't. Really, I don't think we'll ever get there because he is on his A game all the time. And mm-hmm. every once in a while, if you slip, it's not a diss. It's like, hey, I think you could do better. Right. Right. So not I every mean, shot goes in. Real stuff. But but the team Steph player, misses shots. A team Yeah, and he's dope as shit. Right. Right. Steph is incredible. Right. Every once in a while he'll slip up on a three. Right. Right. But if you don't have a good team, then you failing. Then you then you my Lakers. And I'm LA <laughs> all day. But I'm California too. And they got yellow in their uniform. So right. fuck it. I'm I'm the I'm the Warriors. Right. <laughs> right. But so same thing here. So, you know, I I, I could use somebody to push me to improve. And he could use somebody to push him to improve depending on where you want to go, bro. I'm the kind of person that if you say, yo, bro, you know, I like this, but I want to go everywhere. Oh, you want to go everywhere? Well, shit, I know how to get everywhere. (laughs) Oh, you want to go, you want to stay underground? Well, shit, I know how to stay there too. But if you want to go to outer space, my nigga, I got the spaceship. If you want to go submarine, I got a submarine. I got every weapon you could possibly think of. We we just got to train. So in this day and age, with a young dude, with a young voice, and and you having an understanding of historically what's what's popping, what's popping now, how do you meld in between the, the, the in the business sense of, all right, I don't want to make... Now, I, for me, I'm going to be happy, but 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 who am I? I'm a 48-year-old purist. Like, if it's just boom bap bangers with a young kid, will that sell? Does it matter that it doesn't sell? Is it like, you know, how do you sort of navigate that from a production standpoint in this day and age when the sounds are completely different than they were from when your 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 original essence? And that's what I like about Qua. Doing things to sell... And he would have been doing what you don't like. Right. Because selling, there's a certain sound that's selling right now. And he didn't, it ain't like when he, when he finally came in a, stu- a real studio to record, his first instinct wasn't like, yo, I need one of them records to sell. And that is, you, you got to salute that. You got to salute, like, I don't know if I can do what's selling right now. I don't know if my heart would let me do that. I can do it, but I don't know if, if, if I'll be happy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can do that. I got you. But you got to salute someone that comes to you know a facility like this and keeps it 100 on what's in their heart. Got you. Because you could easily get dizzy like, well, can you give me one of them... Uh, <laughs> You know, I've, you could totally, you could really just lose sense of direction real fast. Mm-hmm. So, and that's what I like about Qua. His sense of direction is pure. His his uh, his true north is visible. Got you. And there's no cloud in the sky to take him off course. And, and it's my job to navigate, help him get to wherever he's getting, whether it's big or small, whether it's sharp or dull. Whether it's you know you know on fire or I gotta get him to where he wants to go, mm-hmm. and that that's what I like about this collaboration is you know I trust in him. He seems like he trusts in me, and here we go. When was the first time uh, you came into a you know fancy studio? What was the first thing you recorded, and did it feel any different than, or how different did it feel than when you're rocking you know? for your people on the street or rocking at home when you're like, there's a mic, you know, there's beats, you know, it's a different, it's like, you know, playing ball, it, you know, in the park or at the YMCA. And then you're like, yo, I'm in the garden. There's fancy shit. There's lights, there's fiberglass backboards and a 24. It's a different feeling. So what was that like for you? Where was that first time? Uh, my first time going to a, a studio like that, you just described was definitely Milk Boy in my city, Milk Boy Studio. It was crazy. I'm looking at two recording ones, a piano in the back. Like, I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. And it's crazy because I had all my guys in there with me. And it's funny because we did that uh, 
the uh, B- Big Daddy Kane Raw beat I went off, we did that right in that studio. I felt like that was the right vibe, you know, compliments to my manager. He he kind of had something to do with that, too. But we was just in there feeling. I was feeling. I was feeling groovy. I'm like, oh, let's go. Let's go. And we were just rocking in there. It felt crazy. And what about with Will, uh, with the insomniac? And like, when you walk in here, it's like we're in fucking Star Trek land. Yeah. You know, there's <laughs> fucking studios. There's like shit being made. There's fucking clothing. There's speakers. There's Star Wars shit. You know, there's all kinds of fancy. There's fucking yeah. seats. They massage you. There's toilets that, you know, you get a shave and after a shit. So when you walk in here and you're rocking in front of Will I Am, yeah. what was that like when you're actually properly recording a song? It's amazing and incredible feeling because you, you really next to like someone who came in the game and changed it in their own right. So it's like I gotta make sure anytime I think of a son, like if I feel that beat he put on. I'm like, I got to go. I can't play with this beat. I can't disrespect the legacy of the beat. That's just how you got to think. And I'm going to go. I'm going to go. And being in the, the future, this, listen, the name is what I, listen, the name is what it is. Like, this place is crazy. Like, <laughs> right. This place is crazy. Like, but everybody here is just so, like, like, loving camera. Like, they just passionate about their work. Like, he got an amazing staff, amazing team, amazing, all that. It's good being in here. So when you hear beats and you feel it and you comfortable in the building you in, it's like, it was meant to happen. Like, we did this already. So with with your writing and, and your lyrics, and, and Will said the first time he saw you, you were writing backstage with Nas. Yeah. What What is your process like? And are you writing to a beat in your head? And are you writing, writing, physically writing on a pad most of the time? Because, you know, I, I saw, it fucked my head up. I saw a Method Man, who obviously started writing before there were cell phones, on Sway, rocking off his cell phone. And I was like, whoa, just because he was rocking so so lovely. But also, I was like, Method Man put rhymes on his phone. So what is your process for actually getting these rhymes that are in your head out? And what are you rocking to? Or, are you, or is it just like different situations? Like, are you rocking to a beat when you're writing? Or are you just rhyming? Yeah, like it all. It's no. It's all start with the legs and not the beat. I don't write to a particular beat. Gotcha. I just write. But and if I hear a beat, I'm like, oh, it go together. But it, my my writing process, it always start off with a note I just jotted down. Like you probably just said something in this interview the whole time and probably thought nothing of it. But I just kept it in my head, like. Don't bite my lyrics. You mean, oh no. Don't no, bite no, my no, fucking no. lyrics, I man. Don't I know I spit. <laughs> don't bite my shit, Qua. No, no but, so go ahead. But like, so, but you 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 like to physically write write it down as opposed to yeah, text, sometimes, text notes? No, I could uh I always I got like three notepads. Three notepads that's filled up with uh lyrics. I used to always write them in the pad and then while well, everybody in their phone and just taking it out, I'm writing it in the book because I felt like that's how you, that's how the ones who before me did it. Like, that's where it started from. I got from. you. So I got the feel for that. Then eventually I started going on my phone. So it's like, it's half and half. Meeting Nas, meeting Will I Am. Talk to me about, like, you know, when people that you love, admire, respect, idolize become fans of yours. And to, who were those experiences with? Like, you met Nas, how the fuck did you meet Nas? And what's that like? Uh, I met Nas in New York. We came out in New York. Uh, and the first time I met him, we came in this building. Me and my uh, manager, we came in the building. I'm like, oh, that's Nas right there. Like, we uh, we went in the studio. We sat down. And we just busted up. Had you nice were going time. there to meet him? Huh? Like, like, or was it you, you ran into him or you were going there? Oh, no. There? This was, this was, this was uh, set up. This was scheduled with the meet. So how does that happen? Like, he reached out? Like uh, his, people's, his people's reached out to uh, contact my manager and my manager said how they wanted to uh, see us and present ourselves. Plus, we had a lot of stuff going on in New York that week anyway. So it was only right we go out there. And we when we got in the building and we got in the stool, we just sat down and he was just... I, I'm looking at him like, like, it's crazy. I'm looking at Nas like... Like, I seen Belly a thousand times. Bro. I'm looking at Nas right now. So it's like, whoa. Like. You know what that feel? It, it's kind of magical, though, bro. In a very simple way, it's magical. It's as if, imagine if this was a film, the swordsmen and master swordsmen are like, there's a young kid. And there's no more swordsmen because everyone is picking up, like, you know, weapons. That, you know, you don't even have to have skills to kill. And the freaking legend swordsmen are like, there's one more out there. I want to meet him. Right. 
Some shit like that. It feels like I'm like when you're telling me the story of you, me, and Nas, and you reached out to your people. It's as if you know one of the you know the finest swordsmen heard that there's a young kid in the village that is still practicing the skills, and then the swords a, a sword maker like myself, you know, is like, yo, I want to meet this young swordsman as well, right? It just seems very fucking magical and freaking like on some like ill shit, like you know the chosen one type shit. You know, the prodigal son type shit mm -hmm. where other lords of their craft or, or, you know, there's whispers in the freaking Jedi Council that there's a young <laughs> Jedi out there type I got shit. You. Shit fucking feels fucking awesome, though. No, I know exactly what <laughs> like you mean. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, there's another Jedi, nigga, like. Word on the street is, you know, <laughs> check him out. This you heard about real. this young dude who's like fucking tearing up planets and taking shit over. Yeah, meanwhile, the freaking Empire ain't really checking for that shit, except for the Jedi Knights right. that got an eye out. They could sniff it. Yeah. What, the, what is, is this real story? Jay-Z reached out to you to try to sign him. Is that true? Is that not true? Because uh, from, from what I gathered, and I, this, I pride myself on not fact-checking. This podcast, we pride ourselves on no fact-checking. Mm-hmm. Uh, so fact check that for me. Did Jay-Z try to sign you? Did he try to sign you for a million dollars? And again, uh, w how do you say no to Jay-Z if this is even true? And I see you smiling, so give me something. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, no, uh, that, no, that, no. Jay uh, never uh, tried to sign me for a million dollars and all that. That was just something that was floating around on the internet. And But Jay reaching out to somebody offering him a million dollars, that's, you know, that's Jay-Z. You're going to see him the next day chips all that so no that was just a friendly rumor that was on the internet when but, you see something like that and you're just like are you like what the fuck like how did i get in the middle of this shit like i would be flattered if that was there's something like yo jay-z tried to sign me and i didn't sign with him for a million dollars like I mean, that's fucking crazy right mm -hmm. like i took it like when i first seen it i was even going like oh <laughs> Well, that is that is it true? Like, I'm, saying, <laughs> I'm thinking of like what's what they know that I don't know. But when I seen it spreading around on social media, it was crazy. I'm getting everybody asking me, "Yo, did he sign? Did he sign you?" No, but it was a crazy feeling. Like I can't believe it. Like how much I can't. Like how far I came from just sixty seconds. Like to be right. put in the conversation with Yo, Jay Z. Say that again. Like 60, how many seconds? Sixty seconds. Some of them, not even 60, probably give you 54, Yo, 55. So for all the folks out there listening, if you in a fucked up situation and you don't know how to crystallize 60 seconds to fucking change your trajectory on what you're going to be in life, then your skills are whack. He crystallized 60 seconds that freaking ping ponged and catapulted his career and his future to a totally different fucking potential. 60 fucking seconds and meanwhile motherfuckers are sitting around wasting 60 seconds fucking complaining about their past fucking 60 days. You know what I'm saying? Think about that shit. It's People an incredible forum. They're complaining about their past 60 days, which is two months of fucking struggling and losing out on opportunities to crystallize 60 seconds to change your trajectory. That's powerful. When I don't, that's why I said, say that again. Sixty seconds, nigga. Like what? Imagine if you didn't do those sixty seconds. We wouldn't be sitting here right now. There wouldn't be this freaking, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. That's not a train, right? Because most people are in that tunnel. They see that light, nigga. You know that's a train, though, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> it's not the fun, the fun light you want to see. Yeah, the a, light's coming to you. Yeah, the, there, and you're not walking. You like we getting close. Like how you getting close, nigga? You ain't walking. Yet. That's a fucking train coming your way. <laughs> he, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, bro, because you took advantage of a platform to crystallize sixty seconds to change your trajectory. That's freaking awesome. So, what would you like to see if if I came back here to the Will I Am spaceship? a year, 18 months from today, what would you like to see be going on in your life, in your career as an MC, a year, 18 months from now? Forget 10 years, 20 years. Like if I come back, like, you know, next summer, summer of 2019, I'm like, yo, you remember me? Remember me when you were just, you know, you know just coming up? What would you like to see happen for you as a, as a, as a rapper, as an MC, and your life personally in the next 18, 20 months? I would like to see my message and my like my platform 
like close to a household type name. Like I would like to see everything I stand for, believe for, and that I speak on is coming into fruition. Like I would like to be hopefully done a lot of collabs with some of the greats that I seen in the Maya coming up and my parents seen in the Maya coming up. And like for the kids, I would definitely like to hopefully have something giving back something crazy to them for the uh, Boys and Girls Club or schools, all that, like be a part of all that. But my number one goal, personal life-wise, is just make sure my mom will never want for nothing, make sure my daughter will never want for nothing, and my family. Because when I ain't having it and I was down, they definitely made sure that I wasn't want, wanting for nothing. That's dope. You give it back to, you know, give it back to how you receive. That's dope. Mm-hmm. And Will, for him... What would you like to see for him, you know, with his career and, and to keep things going to, to, to manifest it into the next level? For him to make a given out of his craft, not a living. What do you mean? Well, so if he is successful to the point where he is giving, then boy, is he making a living. Because mm. most people just make a living and ain't giving shit back. And we got enough of that. So if he's making a living to the level to where he's making a given, then damn, he's really making a living, bro. Mm. And there's room for that. There's thirst for that. There's hunger for that. People want that. And, you know, he's the lyrics and the and the things that he stands for, you know, attract that. He's a magnet for that. And if I could if I could be a part, an instrument to making that happen then, you know, I, I, I'd love to assist on on uh, for him to be able to make a given out of his career. Um, and that looks like this. It looks like I see a Kwashu, something on Netflix where it's talking. I love documentaries on Netflix. And I want to see a quad documentary on, on, on the ills of Philadelphia four years from now. I want to see, you know, every every month, He's hitting me with some awesome music, some stuff that's deep, some stuff that's just like I just want to zone out to Qua. I want to I want to see Qua at Staples Center. Mm. I want to see Qua. I want to see the youth wearing like you know Voice of the Youth, you know attire. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to see Qua. I want to see books. I want to see Qua do a prison tour. I want to see Qua do uh, talks at colleges. I want to see Qua do like a college tour. I want to see Qua in Brixton. Mm. I want to see Qua in, you know, Zone 26 in in Spain. Mm. I want to see Qua rock with somebody in the favelas of Brazil on the on the illest freaking like, you know, funky beat on some like hip hop and Brazilian like dirty grimy music. There's an ill MC in Brazil right now in the favelas that I want to connect Qua with. Gotcha. I want to see Qua work with somebody from uh, South Korea. I want to see Qua work with you know the uh, somebody from. The uh, Southeast Asia ghetto MC. I want to uh. see Qua work with uh, somebody from some village in China, uh, even though they ban hip hop in China. I want to. Uh, that, that's happening right now. Right. Boom Nami. Here's a Boom Nami. I love that dude's podcast. <laughs> uh, between now and 2022, Qua has an opportunity to build a huge career. Kendrick Lamar is proof that conscious music is needed in the world. Right. So Chance the Rapper, I want to see Quad do for Philly what Chance did for Chicago. Got you. Right? And Common and Kanye kind of paved the way, but Chance executed it in ways that I would have thought Kanye would have. Right. I want to see a freaking Quad Roots project. That would be stupid. You know what I'm saying? I want to see. You with Black Thought. What? Philly's in the house. Come on. All right, you know what I'm saying? I want to see Qua. We get Spoonie G to come out and rock some shit too over that PSK beat. That's the shit you gotta rock over that PSK mm, right? beat. Mm, I want to see Qua. Mm, mm. I want to see freaking uh, um, DJ Premier and Roy Ayers Qua record. I like it. Awesome collaboration. Can Call I pre-order something totally that shit? Huh? Can I pre-order that already? Right. I mean, come on, bro. I could t- <laughs> on some conscious stuff. What I want to see Qua. Do like a a project at uh, Carnegie Hall with the last poets. Mm. What? Why not? Right. Between now and four years from right. now. Right. 
Like just vision out, vision board, blah, 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 execute, right? And then by 2024, there's an awesome, you know, like you get to that quad book, you get that quad book on, you know, for all the folks that are in and out uh, of the system and no way to, you know, no guidance on how to like stay on course. There's, there's, it's needed right now because mm-hmm. most folks, they come out the system and they brag about being in the system and there is no jobs for them. They can't vote. They really in a fucking tight spot. Mm-hmm. I know because family members, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, and that's the reason why I salute and look how what, what he was able to crystallize in 60 seconds. Like, yo, that means there is a, a void to fill for that. And, you know, sorry, I just I, I just put a whole laundry list what I want to see good luck executing that yeah, shit you got, right, now you got, you got a lot of shit to <laughs> yeah, do but we can do that move shit move right I'm just saying you throw that shit out there I'm a freaking you know I put dream boards up and then a squad around it to try to execute the dreams I like it I like it alright listen Qua wait I gotta ask you the most important question LGP Qua mm-hmm. LGP stands for let's get paid let's go all right, I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. I wish you nothing but luck. Keep doing your thing. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I respect it. Uh, I appreciate it, and I can't wait for the, uh, you know, the rest of your stuff you're doing. And Insomniac singles out, shot uh, with no permits. You hope they'll come back to get that for you. <laughs> At downtown LA, I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. LGP Qua, Will I am. I appreciate you guys rocking. Thanks, rap. I really, appreciate it, bro. I really do. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. It's apparent they hated our parents cause of they black skin I question our actions like what are we doing Our ancestors passed on a fight we are pursuing Went from blacks chained up to blacks locked up The cops on the block trained to get us all shot up I question our reaction like why are we distracted Trapped in a zoo like they caught a black panther We hustle and hustle and gain no wealth We wrestle and we crumble down due to bad health We caught up in the struggle, struggle with knowledge itself Don't wanna be the leader, quick to follow someone else Our daily dilemma seem to never be defeated Our deadly ego they need to be depleted Social media activism should be deleted Cause the revolution won't be a revolution If the revolution is only tweeted and retweeted My guy Kwa Wish you nothing but success Keep doing your thing Keep rocking Keep spitting Will I am Iconic producer Tech fucking icon all, Yo Let me just also say this Sarah Raymaker and all the people that will spot Thank you for setting this up the guys that filmed it, thank you for setting it up. Will I Am's got a stupid studio. I talked Yo. about it on the interview. You heard me talk about it, some Star Trek shit. My right, man right. got some Star Trek shit. Some real life Star Trek shit. International star. International star. It's the I Am Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. Will Qua, thank you for coming on the show. All the, all the insight, uh, all the information. And, and, and thank you for rocking with the best. Sarah, thank you for setting it up. G Moody, last name rhymes with duty. Uh, Hell yeah! What what beat you want to get out of here with? You want what, what's some of that, the, the new bangers you just put out? Give me some of that uh uh T La Rock. Give me that uh be, uh what's that uh T La Rock? It's yours. I hooked it up the boom boom bap bap boom bap. Let's go. Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. You know where to find us. Have no fear. The Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast is here. I'm out. Peace.